Hey again, as you'll have guessed from the title, we have Keppel working properly on, on OS X now. So I'm going to take a few seconds to go through how to get it up and running, because um, it does differ slightly from the uh, Windows and Linux setup. And then we're going to go look at the technical reasons why it's so. Okay, so the process is very simple. I'm just loading up the instructions on the other page. If you want to skip listening to me and just go straight to the instructions, look at the Keppel repo. It's all written there under the OSX section. So all we have to do, if you're using SBCL as your uh, Lisp, go to the Keppel folder, run platform-specific OSX SBCL launch, and give it a few seconds to chew through it. Now the uh, Swank server is started, and you can use Slime to connect to you using the default settings. And then you're in a great place just to say in package Keppel, run the Keppel REPL just as we did on the others, and we're pretty much where we were before. So now I can, let's go and find the moving triangles demo, and say run loop. And if I bring up the window, you can see everything's proper. We've got all the system Chrome is actually showing. Uh, if you're using any other kind of Lisp, you're going to open your terminal again. Um, but in this, this time, you're going to start your Lisp's REPL, whether it's CCL or ECL or whatever. You're going to quick load Keppel-OSX, and then you write Keppel-OSX start. And this is going to basically set up the same things. Then you can slime collect, and you're in exactly the same place as any other platform, including using this magic script. Right. That being said, one of the things I never want Keppel to be is magic. I want it to be kind of a clean way to deal with this, but I want it to feel like it's just part of Lisp. So having these specific cases is a little unnerving, and I want to go through what's actually happening. Right, so if I go to the um, platform-specific folder that we were mentioning before, and look at OSX Lisp. Um, actually, let's open the... Oops. I've got my folders all over the place here. Let's look at the other file that's here. Okay, so this is the magic script. All it does is start SBCL, quick loads the things I said you have to quick load, and then cause Keppel OSX start. So nothing amazing to see there. The start does a couple of things. First is that if you're using um, Mac ports, there's a particular directory that all your libraries live under, and we need things like CFFI to know where those are. So it adds that directory. Um, it also makes this thread main for SDL2. Now, OSX, unlike some of the other operating systems, seems to be very picky about which thread runs OpenGL. Normally, it's just, it doesn't matter which thread runs OpenGL, but you have to make all your OpenGL calls from there. Like I say, OSX seems to be a bit picky. And so we have to make the primary thread the OpenGL thread. Now, the problem with this is normally our REPL connection, our Swank and Slime partnership, runs on a separate thread. And this causes all kinds of issues. Even if you get graphics to show, you'll find that this bar is entirely white or these buttons don't work. There's a number of combinations which just suck. So we have to start the Swank server in style nil. And doing this takes care of... Um, basically telling Swank, don't kick yourself off to another thread and do all the smart things we actually like it doing. This means that Swank is that's using Slime is essentially blocking. But that's not a problem, really, for us, because um, as we've seen in most of our demos, we're calling update Swank from inside the main loop anyway, and basically just we're, t we're taking care of things, and we don't mind that slight latency. I haven't had a problem with it so far, and I've been doing some nice examples in other things, like playing with a Ray Marcher and stuff. So that's that. There's another case that can crop up on OS X, and um, I've seen it with SDL so far, but I'm sure it's doing it with other libraries as well. And it's down to floating point precision errors. Uh, SBCL was firing some exceptions based on floating point inexact. There's some kind of history of issues there. So while I don't entirely understand what's going on, um, if I come back here and do capital F from OS X, Oh, no, I must have done it in Keppel.asd. Let's have a look. Yes, um, it detects when it's running on Darwin and SBCL. It's going to turn those floating point traps off. Um, this seems to be what a lot of libraries are doing to handle this case. And I want to come back with a, a kind of a richer and fuller answer to this. But um, we can do that in time. For now, basically, Keppel works. 
uh, have a good play and yeah, I'd love to see what you're making. So yeah, have a good day. Ciao.